So again, this is Nick Franchino welcoming you back to uh, GIS Day. It's our 1130 session. I have uh, Brian Garcia here from Eagle View. I've known him for a while. He's a senior district sales manager. I mean, I don't know, I could go through and, and read all this stuff, but I've known Brian for, for a while now. Uh, Eagle View has been a great partner for us. And he's going to talk to us today and share, I'm sure, some really good insights about what they're working on at Eagle View. So thanks, Brian. Good to see you and take it away. Hey, Nick. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I just want to say thank you to L.A. County uh, and all the participants here that have, uh, you know, taken some time and effort to make this event successful. You know, I did a bit of a social media promotion of the event, and, I, and I, it was true what I was saying, that nobody does it like L.A. County. Uh, not if it was an in-person event or, in this case, a virtual event. You guys are doing it top-notch. And what about the presentations that we had uh, both yesterday and this morning? Uh, the Mars one was outstanding and uh, pretty exciting stuff we'll be doing here in the future. Uh, before I get started on my presentation, if you did join the cake, cake contest, I know Steve uh, – Steinberg had said mine looked like a pancake, but I just want you to know that that right there, I don't know. I, I think we got something good going there, at least third place, maybe. <laughs> that could be a flying saucer that was on Mars. <laughs> oh, well, again, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for everybody for taking the time here to join this presentation um, I wanted to take the next 20, 25 minutes to talk a little bit about our technology and the impact it's had on virtual workspaces. And before I do that, I just wanted to uh, introduce uh, myself and uh, a little bit what I do for the company and also my uh, counterpart and my teammate, uh, Amanda Bullen. Uh, I don't know if you were able to join the session yesterday as far as baking the cake, but I've been with uh, Eagle View for about 10 years. Uh, and I've been selling aerial imagery uh, for about 20 years. So this has become a passion of mine in order to utilize this particular GIS data set um, in order to transform the way that government makes decisions. And so, uh, like Nick said in his introduction, I've enjoyed working with LA County and uh, enjoy what I do here. Amanda, same thing. She's been with Eagle View and she's a technical manager. So we come as a team when we work with LA County or any of the other counties around the United States. Uh, we not only provide a data product, but we also train you on how to utilize that data product in order to leverage it to its fullest and get the uh, most return on your investment. So here's a little quick agenda that I'll be uh, rolling through here today. First of all, we're going to talk a little bit about what is a virtual workspace, right, um, and what that actually means. And then we'll talk about our Eagle View technology and how that uh, plays into GIS and how some of you folks are already utilizing it. And then uh, with the time left, we're going to go over some uh, top five uh, government use cases on how folks are using our technology and integrating GIS. Okay, so here's, a, here's the first question. What is a virtual workspace? If I was to ask this question about a year ago, I'm, I'm guessing more than half of us would have took a second to kind of think about, well, what is a virtual workspace? And what does Brian mean uh, when he's asking that question? But as you know, today with the events that are uh, that are still taking place, um, you know, I think we're well aware of what a, what a virtual workspace looks like. As I talk to most of my customers here in the Southwest, uh, I cover Southern California, Arizona, and New Mexico, and uh, most of my customers are still working uh, from a virtual workspace. And so what's that mean? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're in a home office space. Um, as you saw me yesterday, I was giving a presentation from my home kitchen, uh, but still being able to utilize the tools in my computer, my workspace, uh, in, any given in any given environment. And so, of course, with the events that have taken place today, it's caused teams to be uh, caused teams to and forced teams to have to meet and interact by utilizing networks that are connected and that are suitable for collaborative efforts. And so, again, I wanted to just, first of all, establish what a virtual uh, workspace is. And um, just from a statistical standpoint and kind of what's taking place over time is, uh, if you look back, this was actually published in 2019 uh, in talking about um, U.S. workers and, and, and how they're changing the way they work from a cubicle and office environment to going into a, a virtual workspace. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean a home office. 
That can mean from your front uh, in your driver's seat when you're actually doing field work at a local coffee shop or in a backyard. Uh, but you can see as the trend steadily increases that here in 2019, when this study was published, it looked like 68% uh, you know, were expected uh, to work from home. And as you can imagine here in 2020, this has substantially shot up in terms of how we're working and how we're dealing with the uh, current environment. So here's just a, uh, a little animation that uh, I found on the internet that was pretty suitable for this presentation on how our workspace has changed over time, starting from 1981 um, all the way until present. And now this isn't my office, but uh, I, I got a good laugh at some of, the, some of the office supplies that were on this particular desk, everything from your old school fax machine that now has turned into PDFs and your Rolodex that is now your CRM. And so essentially all your tools now have become very accessible from your, your laptop or your phone. And that's essentially, you know, as I continue to talk about our technology, that is what we've brought to the government space. <clears throat> okay. So Eagle View Technology, uh, for the folks, again, that weren't on the presentation yesterday, uh, we're a company that's based out of uh, Bellevue, Washington, and uh, we specialize in aerial imaging technology. Um, but there's just so much to impact when, it, when you talk about a company that's been in business for 20 years and that has pioneered um, different aspects of aerial imagery capture and measurement. Uh, so I'm going to try to take you through that brief history through some um, images to help show what our technology has helped transform in the government space from going from old school clipboards per se all the way to be able to making decisions from your desktop. Um, so as we started business 20 years ago here at Eagle View and we entered into this space this particular image is what we're looking at is a straight down ortho image. And this is your traditional image going back to World War II. They were taking these images in order to identify features on the ground um, in order to make more informed decisions. And so as we fast forward through time, and as when I entered this space about 18 years ago, um, I was selling satellite imagery. Um, and as we continue to improve with resolution in the ortho space, the images got better and better as we went. Well, along came a company by the name of Pictometry, now Eagle View. They not only helped capture the most detailed ortho imagery in the industry, but now they provided the industry a brand new perspective at looking things. And when I say a brand new perspective, I'm talking about a perspective that makes sense to how our, how our human brains interpret information as I look at this straight down image, I can tell features on the ground and very important to our mapping exercises in GIS. But if you can't clearly make out what that feature is on the ground, you're having to take that trip out in the field in order to map that properly or in order to identify what features on the ground. In this case, you know, a, a cell tower or a fence or vegetation. But with the Eagle View technology, we not only bring you this super high resolution imagery. When I say super high resolution, I'm referring to uh, three inch or better, two and a half, 2.2 inch resolution imagery that you're getting both in your traditional straight down ortho and your oblique. And over the years, not only are we capturing high resolution imagery that just looks so nice on, on your screens and being able to demonstrate to the constituents, but it's actionable imagery. You're able to actually measure utilize proprietary measure, measurement tools that we offer to our customers in order to do measurements from your desktop. Um, and keep in mind that we're talking about distance, area, and then even the height value, that Z value of being able to measure uh, from point A to point B. And with the amount of detail in these photos, it's allowing folks, especially government agencies, being able to accurately and reliably rely on these measurements and measurement tools so they don't have to go out in the field and make these same sorts of uh, decisions. The third component to our technology 
is being able to actually integrate this powerful GIS data that your, you folks have been capturing for so long and maintaining in your database and actually displaying it right on top of the imagery so it comes to life and allows every average day Joe's to be able to see information that you've created in your GIS but also make sense in terms of our human brains and from that perspective. Uh, so this is something that our application or if you're utilizing your own GIS applications, it allows you to bring in your GIS data, whether it be parcel lines in this case, uh, here's an example of a floodplain in Maricopa County uh, where they were demonstrating where some of the uh, property structures that were having to be rated in a different zone due to things that have changed over time. This is an example of building outlines. Uh, so not only do we do aerial imagery uh, capture, but we also then start doing data extraction and feature extraction in this case, and in LA counties, we've done uh, numerous projects where we've actually extracted uh, feature data out of the aerial imagery. And then <clears throat> here's a perspective in that oblique angle, being able to put on terrain or contour data uh, right on top of the imagery, both in your ortho and oblique imagery, being that uh, this uh, imagery is, is geo-referenced and every pixel has a latitude longitude uh, associated to that. The next thing that's very important to Eagle View technology is the change detection factor. And so, um, as I talked about over the past 20 years, we've partnered with um, over 1,800 uh, jurisdictions and counties around the U.S., um, and we've established aerial imaging programs over a series of years that now allows those government agencies, whether it be in the assessor's office, whether it be in a planning department, whether it be in a public safety office, it allows folks to be able to analyze the imagery that we've captured over time side by side in order to do a comparison and to determine what has changed on that parcel of land. If you think about it from a, um, a complexity and, and how large LA County is with the number of parcels and population that they have, it's nearly impossible or say a county assessor to do their job in order to keep up with new construction um, and being able to put that on that tax roll. So that's why Eagle View has developed a change detection application uh, that allows you to compare imagery side by side where we point out what has changed over time, what has demolished over time, um, what is new over time, and being able to do that very quickly or where you're not doing it from a manual standpoint where we're providing this data back to you in a GIS format so you're able to easily see where these changes have taken place over time. And this here's an example of being able to see it in the side-by-side -side and then in your uh, oblique detail view to then start making your measurements on your uh, very powerful oblique imagery. And then uh, one more thing I wanted to point out about our aerial imaging capture and what we do at Eagle View, I think that makes us, uh, that makes us just a great partner, uh, especially when it comes to the government sector. Uh, we have what's called our disaster response program. In the event there's a natural disaster that's qualifying or a terrorist attack, uh, Eagle View has agreed to partner with our, with our customers in order to get out there and fly those areas right after a storm has taken place. And so, for example, these uh, particular images um, are uh, from a uh, tornado that's taken place in the, in the Midwest here recently. But I know I did stick my third image of a recent wildfire, um, as we all know, that has been taking place in, uh, here in Southern California in general. And we've been a part of numerous captures. In fact, I'm working with the LA County Public Works Department right now, not only to capture imagery over the lake fire, but also the Bobcat fire, in addition to capturing LIDAR and getting elevation data so folks can start doing their studies in order to uh, limit uh, floods uh, in the future and, and for planning purposes. All right, how am I doing on time? Uh, uh, 15 five, minutes. Five minutes till Q&A. All right, very good. So about let's, let's run through the top five uses then, about a minute each, and then we can uh, go ahead and open it up. That sounds good, Nick. So again, this has been a super passion of mine for the past uh, 
you know, 10 years here at Eagle View. When I first entered the space, I, uh, I, I came into it because I loved aerial imagery. And then I got a hold of this oblique image, this 45 degree angle. And I said, wow, this opens so much more things to, to, uh, to government departments on how they can solve problems from their desktop. It answers so many questions where you don't have to go out there. So I'm going to talk about the top five, number one, public services and information. This is really simple, folks. This is, folks, these are for the people that are putting out a GIS web map online. If you don't have Eagle View aerial imagery as a base map, and then being able to integrate your oblique imagery into these systems, you're selling the constituents of your county short, being that they're able to utilize this type of imagery for their own functions. And that's how Eagle View understands the government market, is that we understand not only do you service your internal departments, but you also have your external customers, which we care so much about as well. And so that's our very first top use case is being able to deploy this information out to the uh, public and allow them to make their own deformed decisions um, at their desktop. The second big use case is out of a county assessor. This is really where our large ROI story comes out of. Uh, think about the, the task that's at the hand with millions of parcels um, to be assessed on a regular basis. Um, back in the day, they used to send out appraisers with a clipboard and a measuring tool and go around your house in order to perform an accurate measure. Well, here we're looking at a screenshot of a business partner of ours where our imagery, both ortho and oblique, is integrated into their system and the backbone of this particular workflow that allows them to go parcel by parcel in order to make sure they have accurate data in their system that allows them to value these properties uh, accurately, which is very important for just trust in government that they're actually getting assessed properly. Being able to do this from the desktop and pull this up with the constituent and a taxpayer and explain why they're getting this particular uh, tax bill this year is a very, very powerful tool. And again, ultimately generates additional revenue in a county that provides great services uh, for county um, and cities uh, alike. Third use case, public safety. I can't tell you how many use case stories we've heard in public safety on how this has helped save lives or help, how it's helped prepare for large scale events such as an active shooter or if you're going to have a festival to be able to know where you're going to get people in and out. Here's an example of an integration right into a CAD system. A CAD system, a computer aided dispatch system that's usually in a 911 center. Before, what you would normally see on the left-hand side is a stick map that has a lot of lines and roads. Now we're able to provide these first responders exactly what that area looks like so they know exactly how they're going to respond to an event and get to that location quicker. Here's an example of uh, here um, you have some crates and some, um, some items that look like it could catch on fire very easily. This would be a high risk or a high consequence area for a fire department. Perhaps they want to go ahead and keep an eye on this a little bit better in order to do a little bit more inspection to make sure they're falling in line with what they need to do. And then last but not least in the public safety sector, I talk about emergency management. We talked about wildfires earlier. Imagine overseeing a space like this, uh, a large space like LA County of 4,000 square miles and looking to evacuate millions and millions of people at one time. Well, having this type of aerial imagery data at your fingertips is very valuable at that critical moment. I can tell you many folks stood up websites, public facing websites uh, during these wildfires and, and mudslides in California to help inform the public. And then last but not least, I have uh, public works, public works, Many, many uses when it comes to understanding imagery from all different perspectives, not just your straight ortho down when it comes to mapping, but actually understanding what's taking place in the ground, or in this case, the intersection, being able to identify light poles, uh, street, uh, street signs. You know, here we're talking about the imagery getting better resolution. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you can actually make out what those road signs are as you, as you start to zoom down. Into, into the imagery. Here's a little bit more zoomed up view that shows you uh, being able to make out these particular signs. 
And I'm sorry, there was one more. Here's the number five is development services. And I'm going to roll through this real quick so we can open it up to questions. But in development services, there's a number of different divisions. And I got to say, this has been one of the divisions that has taken our technology and has run with it. Everybody from code enforcement to inspectors to regional planning to determine what land cover it is. With the type of detail that we are capturing in our new reveal imagery and the type of measurement capabilities with your GIS data overlaid, why leave the office? Why put your employees at risk where you can make these particular decisions now digitally in your virtual workspace? So again, I want to thank you for your time and open up to questions. Um, and I'll put our contact information so you can take a screenshot if you'd like. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brian. That was an awesome talk. Um, although I was hoping you'd have the chef's hat on today again. Um, that was very, very uh, becoming, to say the least. Um, so we do have <laughs> we do have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, I see Nick's here too, so um, I'm going to sort of take over a little bit uh, as he's getting ready for his talk in a few minutes. Uh, but first question, uh, does your platform support other classic imagery, such as vegetation classification, multi-band imagery, thermal, or others? Yeah, that's a great question. So I believe the platform that they're referring to is our, our Connect platform. And so that's a uh, online platform that was built by EagleView that allows our end users to be able to access both our imagery and GIS data that's uploaded. And so the, the idea in mind there was not to create an application that competes directly with Esri and the ArcMap tools and uh, tools that are available through the GIS uh, platform there. But the intention was to be able to get this viewer out to the masses that are at the uh, front counters and folks that are able to just uh, log into a system very quickly in order to get these answers and not necessarily the analysis that maybe you're referring to, to be able to pull up multi-spectral bands and so forth. So for, the, for, that particular band, uh, for that particular data set that we do in fact capture, you're going to want to utilize that into your GIS platforms and applications that are built to handle those sorts of data. Great, thank you so much. Um, and then another question we had was, what do you use to fly the imagery? Is it a larger aircraft with cameras equipped or somebody holding a camera or is it drones or is it a mix? Yeah, you know, Steve, uh, another great question. Um, I, if I had more time, I was going to show some what some of our planes look like, but believe it or not, back in the day when we first started 20 years ago, uh, it wasn't far from having somebody hanging outside the plane and taking uh, aerial imagery and taking it back into the lab and finding out how we're going to develop measurement tools and how to accurately measure on these oblique photos. So that's how we started out. Uh, but today we have the largest fleet here in North America. Uh, it's, it's a fixed wing aircraft, meaning that we have our sensors uh, mounted and placed at the belly of our planes. And essentially it's like a lawnmower. We, we mow a sky back and forth and we're flying flight lines and after uh, it's all said and done, you know, every pixel in your project is, is, has a latitude and longitude associated with it. Uh, so it's a smart image you're able to measure and know where it's at in space. Um, and then as far as in the drone space, um, yes, we do have a division in our company that we very much fly imagery and we specialize in insurance and roofing reports uh, where they really need to get right on top of that space and so in the government uh, vertical, what we're doing there is we're exploring with public works um, and public safety and the assessors department on how drone technology fits in with that workflow and how we can make it readily available. So fixed wing aircraft and drone right now are our current capture technologies. Great. And maybe sort of a long a similar line, but also some of the things you touched on in your talk. Um, can you talk a little bit about how Eagle View is is doing the feature extraction from the imagery, um, you know, and where you may be going with that? Yeah, no, I appreciate the question, Steve. So as we evolve as a company, um, as we continue to improve our capturing system 
as I demonstrated with the revealed uh, reveal imagery. Um, we also have a, um, a group in our company that is strictly focused on data extraction. And so over time, we have been putting together a list of features that were, uh, w that were extracting um, using computer vision or AI in order to identify these features very quickly and consistently is the key. And I think that's something that our company and the, the reputation that we've had in the industry is bringing the best product to market, bringing the tools that are accurate and, and ready to go. Uh, this is something else that we want to make sure that we get right in the space. And we know that, um, you know, feature extraction using aerial imagery, Im, uh, aerial in imagery has been more challenging than what most people thought. Um, and, uh, it's one thing to be able to uh, run a data, data extraction using AI on a, a one square mile area, but try to do it on a 4,000 square mile area as big as LA County with uh, coastal vegetation, desert, uh, pixels don't look the same. And so, uh, but that is where our company is going is being able to automatically extract different features and put these into your work workflows for you guys to make decisions but you not have to be able to have that, you have to be able to have that trust in our data to be able to then put it in your system. So that's where we're at with that, Steve, is we're working very hard to bring you something that's reliable there. All right. Well, hey, we're uh, a little bit over time, but Nick said I could do that uh, since he's next. Uh, so I do want to thank you for the presentation uh, on, on the technology and where it's going. Uh, um, Yes, the cake is beautiful. Vote, <laughs> vote for Brian Garcia's cake. Yeah, <laughs> the judges are, are not influenced by that. I hope um, we have an expert <laughs> all judges coming up. Um, so just a couple of quick uh, notes. Uh, I do want to thank Eagle View again for providing the Zoom platform that's allowed us to do this virtual event over the uh, the last uh, day and a half and going forward. Um, I also uh, want to.